Uh, he'll be scrutinising the next half hour closely. Sam, what can we expect? Well, actually, I think it's been a moment today. It feels like something shifted in politics over the summer. You know, the, we went into the summer with the Uxbridge by-election, uh, won by the uh, held by the Tories, uh, but the others uh, held uh, won by the opposition. A uh, bit of a no-school drill. But the summer was really quite tricky for the Tories, and there's this sense, this growing sense, that they are uh, in some political troubles. Momentum. Uh, uh, sort of gaining momentum of uh, issue by issue, the party not being able to get lift off. The question is whether or not Prime Minister's questions today reflects that. Both leaders will have had tips and training for PMQs over the summer. Uh, can Rishi Sunak uh, find the language to defend his government? Can he get back on the front foot despite all of the troubles that we've seen from small boats to the schools crisis? Can Keir Starmer be punchy enough to properly cut through and make the case uh, and to press home the advantage that Labour undoubtedly feel that they've had from the news agenda over the last few days? I think we're about to find out. It's an important one. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to start by Prime Minister just taking to his feet. And the lionesses for their fantastic yeah. performance yeah. at the World Cup. We are all incredibly proud of them. Mr. Speaker, I also know the whole House will want to join me in sending condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of Sergeant Graham Savile. It is a testament to his bravery that he died in the line of duty and a terrible reminder of the work the police do every day to keep us safe. Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this House, I shall have further such meetings later today. Louis Fletch. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Labour Party used to claim that it represents working-class people. But Labour's ULES expansion to Greater London will now hammer millions of working people with bills of £12.50 per day or £4,500 per year. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that it's unacceptable for Londoners and those in surrounding counties to face this regressive and unacceptable tax, and will he do everything that he can to help working people? Well, Mr. Mr Speaker, I agree with my honourable friend. It is disappointing that last week the Labour leader allowed the Labour mayor to introduce you as charging hard-working people £12.50 every time they start their car adding to the burden of the cost of living. All I can say, Mr Speaker, is while we focus on helping hard-working families, all he does is punish them. We don't, we don't come to the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join the Prime Minister in congratulating the Lionesses and his comments about Sergeant Savile? I think we all speak for the whole House when we speak on that subject. I'd also like to extend the warmest welcome to our new Labour member for Selby and Ainsty. Yeah. He's already made history for the Labour Party by overturning the largest Tory majority ever in a by-election. Yeah. And I'd also welcome the honourable members for Uxbridge and South Ryslip, Somerton and Frome. Yeah. Mr Speaker. The roof of Singlewell Primary School in Gravesend collapsed in May 2018. Thankfully, it happened at the weekend and no children were injured. The concrete ceiling was deemed dangerous and liable to collapse, and everyone knew the problem existed in other schools. Yet the Prime Minister decided to halve the budget for school maintenance just a couple of years later. Does he agree with his Education Secretary that he should be thanked for doing a good job. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I know how concerned parents, children and teachers are, and I want to start by assuring them that the government is doing everything it can to fix this quickly and minimise the disruption to children's education. We make no apology for acting decisively in the face of new information. And let me provide the House with an update on where we are. Of the 22,000 schools in England, the vast, vast majority won't be affected. In fact, in two-thirds of inspections of suspected schools, RAC is not actually present. And to tackle the 1% of schools that have been affected so far, the 1%, we are assigning each of those schools a dedicated caseworker and providing extra funding to fix the problem. In the majority of cases, children will attend school as normal and the mitigations take typically just days or weeks to complete. We will do everything we can to help parents, support teachers and get children back to normal school life as quickly as possible. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, Mr Speaker, Wood Green Academy and Sandwell was on Labour's building list in 2010. Yeah. Yeah. They scrapped it, yeah. and now children there are in a crumbling school. Exactly. Yeah. The head of the National Audit Office accuses him of taking a sticking plaster approach. Yeah. The NAO report says he cut £869 million. The Dyson Supersonic Hairdryer comes with a flyaway attachment. The high-pressure Dyson digital motor harnesses the coander effect to hide flyaways in a single pass and leave a smooth and shiny finish. For fast drying with no extreme heat, Dyson Supersonic, engineered for every hair type. Buy direct from the people who made it. Free delivery from Dyson. The person who ran the Department for Education says he is personally responsible. Yeah. Yeah. On Monday, he leapt to his own defence, saying it's utterly wrong to blame him. So why does literally everyone else say it's his fault? Yeah. <laughs> Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, the professional advice from the technical experts on RAG has evolved over time, and indeed, it is something that successive governments have dealt with, dating back to 1994, Mr Speaker. Now, as new advice has come forward, the government has rightly, decisively and swiftly acted in the face of that advice. But he, he talked about school budgets and talked about what I had done, but let me just walk him through the facts of actually what that spending review did, because he brought it up. Well, no, he's brought it up, so presumably he would like to hear the facts. Funding for school maintenance and rebuilding will average £2.6 billion a year over this Parliament as a result of that spending review, which represents a 20% increase on the years before. Indeed, indeed, Mr Speaker, far from cutting budgets, as he alleges, the amount spent last year was the highest in a decade. That spending review, that spending review maintained, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, that spending review maintained the school rebuilding programme, delivering 500 schools over a decade, a pace completely consistent with what had happened previously. And, Mr Speaker, it is worth pointing out that during the parliamentary debates on that spending review, the Labour Party and him did not raise the issue of RAC one single time. So before he jumps on the next political bandwagon, he should get his facts straight. Mr Speaker, Carmel College in Darlington was on the Labour's building list in 2010. They scrapped it, and now children there are in a crumbling school. Yeah. And on the one hand, we have him saying it's nothing to do with him. Yeah. On the other side, we have the facts. And there's a simple way to clear this up. Why doesn't he commit to publish the requests from the Department of Education for the school rebuilding programme and what risks he was warned of before he turned them down? Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the Honourable Gentleman has now brought up twice the Labour, the Labour school rebuildings programme. He's now brought it up twice. So let's just look at that and look at the facts surrounding that. Because we do know the truth about that programme, Mr Speaker, because the NAO, as he's called on, actually reviewed that programme later on. What did they define? They found that Labour school rebuilding programme actually excluded 80% of schools. <laughs> Next, what do they find? What do they find? That it was a third more expensive than it needed to be, needlessly wasting resources that have gone to schools. And Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, this is the worst bit. The worst bit is that that program, because now he's talking about the physical condition of schools, that program only allocated funds solely on the basis of ideology, with no regard whatsoever to the physical condition of schools, Mr Speaker. That's why the Independent James Review described that programme as time-consuming and expensive, just like the Labour Party. We don't want to start off with somebody leaving so early. Because that's what's going to happen, Keir Starmer. Well, Mr Speaker, they want more, so let me continue. Ferry Hill School in County Durham was on Labour's building list in 2010. They scrapped it, 
and now children there are in a crumbling school. The truth is, this crisis is the inevitable result of 13 years of cutting corners, botched jobs, sticking plaster politics. It's the sort of thing you expect from cowboy builders, saying that everyone else is wrong, everyone else is to blame, protesting they've done an effing good job, even as the ceiling falls in. The difference, Mr Speaker, is that in this case, the cowboys are running the... We expect better behaviour, Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, this is exactly the kind of political opportunism that we've come exactly the kind of opportunism that we've come to expect from Captain Hindsight over here. Before, before today, before today, he's never once raised this issue with me across this dispatch box. It wasn't even worthy of a single... It's the same for this side as well. Can I just say, we're going to have a calmer question times going forward. I want to hear the question, I want to hear the answers, just like your constituents, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, before today he never once raised this issue with me in Parliament. It wasn't even worthy of a single mention in his so-called landmark speech on education this summer. And if we'd listened to him, our kids would have been off school and locked down for longer. It's as simple as that. He talks about 13 years. Well, let's see what happened. When we, in, when we came into office, two-thirds of school were good and outstanding. Now it's 90 per cent, Mr Speaker. Introduce the pupil premium to get more funding to the most disadvantaged pupils, Mr. Speaker. Today, they are 75% more likely yes. to go to university. Yes. And as a result of our reforms, we now have the best readers in the Western yes. world, yes. Mr. Speaker. That's what 13 years of education reform gets you, all of which opposed by the party opposite. Yes. But it claims to be a man of detail. There are 100 parliamentary questions from this side on this issue and an opposition day motion. But, Mr Speaker, let us continue. Holy Family Catholic School in Bradford was on the Labour building list in 2010. They scrapped it and now children there too are in a crumbling school. Um, Mr Holden, I think I've heard enough. No, then, this is the last time you make your mind up. You either go now or you're quiet for the rest of this. And, Mr Speaker, if you can believe it, in April this year, the Education Secretary signed a contract for refurbishment of her offices. Ah. It's got a personal stamp of approval on it. It cost, I can't quite believe this, £34 million. Pounds. Can he explain to parents whose children aren't at school this week why he thinks a blank cheque for his Tory minister's office is better use of taxpayers' money than stopping schools collapsing. Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, what I'd say to parents is, in the receipt of new information, we have acted decisively to ensure the safety of children and minimise disruption to education, as we have laid out and communicated extensively. That is the right thing to do. And I would also gently point out to him, Mr Speaker, whilst the Department for Education started this process, 18 months ago in spring of last year, as far as I can tell, in Labour-run Wales, they still don't know which schools are affected, Mr Speaker. But again, he brought up this issue of funding, Mr Speaker, and again, let's look back to what happened in that spending review, because in that spending review, I increased the Department for Education's capital budget by 25% to a record £7 billion, Mr Speaker. It tripled the amount that we spend on children with special education needs and Abilities. It improved the condition of the overlooked FE estate and it set the course for per pupil funding to be the highest ever. But it also, Mr Speaker, crucially invested £5 billion to help our pupils recover the lost learning from COVID. £5 billion, Mr Speaker, and he might remember that because he, we wanted pupils learning, he wanted longer lockdowns. I, I, I think he just doesn't get how this it's all fine out there yeah. is so at odds with the lived experience. Like he thought his tax rises were for other families to pay. He thinks his school cuts are for other families to endure. Yes. Doesn't it tell you everything you need to know? That he's happy to spend billions of taxpayers' money sprucing up Tory offices, billions to ensure there's no VAT on Tory school fees, 
party won't lift a finger when it comes to protecting other people's schools, other people's safety, other people's children. Mr Speaker, I, I know he comes here with these prepared scripts, but he hasn't listened to a single fact, a single fact of six questions about the record amounts of funding going into schools, about the incredible reforms to education impacting the most disadvantaged children in our society, a record that we are rightly proud of. And yes, of course, he can, of course we can name the schools. That's because we are reacting to information and publishing that information, Mr Speaker, so we know where the issues are, something that we're still waiting for by the Welsh Government in Wales. But, Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker of course, he wants to try.